It's December 17th, 2017. It's about a week before Christmas, eight days actually. So this is our Christmas edition of the Knee Jerk Tour Sports Talk of Eno and Big Al. As always, I am your host, Al Beaton, longtime Detroit-based podcaster and blogger. Joining me as always, well, except for two weeks ago when he was uh, got too ill to do the podcast, that's why we've been off for so long, is Greg Eno. Uh, well, he'll tell you where you can find him all over the web, but Greg, I know you were sick, but you look pretty healthy now. Well, thanks, uh, Al Beaton. I appreciate that <laughs> introduction. I am Greg Eno from uh, multiple places on the interwebs, uh, most uh, prominently on uh, my, my WordPress blog, Out of Bounds. Just uh, Google Greg Eno Out of Bounds or go to WordPress and, and uh, search Out of Bounds. You can also uh, catch me in my other WordPress blog, uh, The Winged Wheeler, mm -hmm. which is, of course, about the, about the Red Wings and the NHL. And follow me on Twitter, at Greg Eno. Follow the Knee Jerks on Twitter at uh, the Knee Jerks and our Facebook fan page is facebook.com slash, slash the Knee Jerks. And our uh, uh, group there is the Knee Jerks group. Uh, Al, it was, it was right. I, I was under the weather a couple weeks ago. Did not feel like doing this show. I, would, I didn't look presentable. Didn't sound presentable. So we skipped. But when you're doing an every other week um, endeavor like this is, uh, you lose one episode and you fall. You know, you're you're a month out from your last show. There's, so there's been a lot going on since November 19th, which is which is when we last were with you. We'll get into what Al's got on the agenda a little bit. Uh, we we'll also talk about. Uh, uh, we, you know, we've got the birthday birthday game coming up and all sorts of things. But our um, guest tonight is uh, I, I'm calling him here on Facebook, Mr. Electric Football. Yeah, uh, that's Earl <laughs> Shores of uh, the Unforgettable Buzz and Full Color Football, and he's got another book out. It's uh, he's going to just uh, ring this electric football thing dry for every ounce of uh, uh, every penny he can get out of it. And we're going to be talking to him <laughs> about his new book. Uh, the Electric Football uh, Wish Book. <laughs> this is a book about, Al's got one too. This is a book about uh, a c compendium of um, Christmas catalogs uh, from our youth. Uh, those wonderful pages that were just filled with toys, not just electric football toys, but just toys in general. And we'll take a trip down memory lane with Earl. We'll talk about that book as well. Uh, we've got uh, lots of all the sorts of Detroit sports to catch up with you on since it's been such a long time. But, but before we get to that and before we get to the birthday game, let's Al let uh, you know how else you can get a hold of the podcast other than by the way you're doing it right now. Right. As always, uh, you can find us on the Mothership Blog Talk Radio. As always, search The Knee Jerks, Eno and Big Al. We're on iTunes like every other podcast in the universe. So again, use this, uh, just use the search words, The Knee Jerks, The Knee Jerks, Eno and Big L, you'll be fine. Us. Uh, we're on Stitcher Radio as well, which is a uh, streaming podcast app. You can also download off of that. That works on everything from Android to iOS. You can use it on the web on your computer browser. Pretty much if it has a browser or a, you can use an app, you can find Stitcher Radio. That's a great place to uh, find a podcast. I use my, that's, that's my personal podcast. Uh, tool to, uh, to listen to podcasts. I suggest you guys check it out as well, uh, Stitcher.com. So uh, between the three, and as always, we're, uh, we're, you can find all the links to all this on, on social, on our social media accounts on Twitter and on Facebook. We'll have links to all of this. All right, Greg, with that out of the way, I'm out of breath, so what's next? <laughs> well, it's uh, it's uh, time to play a game we like to call um, uh, Whose Birthday Is It? Everybody knows uh, how we uh, play this game right now, but let's uh, hear the maestro first. For those of you uh, listening on the podcast, this is where I insert the music. We can't do that on video. <laughs> All right, Greg, fire away. Okay, uh, this is a game that we like to call Whose Birthday Is It? Uh, and this is a very simple game. I give Al a clue or two or three of an individual whose birthday it is today in the world of sports. And if Al can, collect, uh, can correctly guess that person within the first two clues, he will win Electronic Battleship. Ooh, got right out of this. I uh, electronic? I don't know. Yeah. I don't know about this newfangled stuff. Yeah, I've got it right I, out of the, the book. the analog? <laughs> <laughs> we just put in the little the little pegs. Yeah. Okay, you're uh, a little complicated here, Greg. So, all right, fire this, away. This 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 personnel uh, made his uh, name in the world of hockey. Uh, he's still with us. He's uh, born on this date in 1951, so he's 66 years old today. He's uh, primarily known as a uh, not what he did as he wasn't. He's not known as a player, let's put it that way. He's mm -hmm. known as a uh, non-player. I will tell you that he's been associated with um, four different NHL teams, uh, one of which he was associated with twice. I will tell you that he's currently active, and I will tell you that he is um, – uh, he's been a – I don't want to give any more. I'll stop there. If I give one more, I may, be, may give it away too soon, so I'll stop right there. Oh, man. So apparently we're probably talking about a coach or front office guy. 
Uh, like I said he was known for a player. Uh, good Lord. That's it. I, it must be something very obvious because if you want to give more than what you just gave, I, I used to think I would get it. So I, that's still a little too vague for me. So I'm going to pass on the $20 question wait for the $50 question. So okay, I, we'll I don't turn have that one it over. just yet. We'll turn that one over. Uh, we'll uh, get, come back to that after we interview Earl Shores. Earl Shores has been one of our uh, dear, dearest friends on this program. He's been uh, doing the knee, the knee jerks for a number of years. Uh, we, we we love having him on. He, he's uh, I, I teasingly said at the top of the show we, we call him I call him Mr. Electric Football. That really why not call him that? He's written three books about the about the subject. The most recent one is uh, I think maybe maybe his his most. Um, the, the funnest one yet, uh, which is not to denigrate the first two at all, but this is just really hitting close to home in terms of of uh, really uh, tickling the nostalgic uh, um, part of you here. It's the Electric Football Wish Book. Al's got one up as well. Electric Football Wish Book. What this is is uh, pages and pages, and there's Al as well. We're doing the same thing. Um, pages and pages of excerpts taken directly out of catalogs wish book catalogs over the years, starting, I believe, in the late 50s or mid 50s through the late 80s. And uh, it's just it's it's full color. It's it's literally like flipping through. It's it's like you found a bunch of catalogs in your in your parents attic or something and just started flipping through them. I mean, they're just filled with toys. Of course, lots of the focus, obviously, is still on electric football. But within those pages, you'll see. Uh, I was teasing Al about a month or so ago when we did the birthday game that he was going to win Skittle Bowl. That's in there. I, I just mentioned Electronic Battleship. Uh, there's Talking Football. There's NFL Strategy. There's um, there's billiards games and all dart boards, all sorts of things that that we wanted as kids, as adolescents. Uh, Al's, uh, I mean, uh, Earl has taken us down once again down memory lane, and it's called the Electric Football Wish Book. Unfortunately, we were going to have Earl on December third uh, when I took ill. And we were going to give you a lot more time to get a hold of this book in time for the holidays. It may be kind of tight to do that now, but does not mean that you shouldn't still go out and get it because it's a, it's a terrific uh, uh, compendium. Uh, Earl's on the other line, and um, how are you doing tonight, Earl? I appreciate it. I'm doing very well. Um, how are you guys doing? Good, good to I'm talk good. to you again, Greg and Al. Yeah, you too. Um, you know, you, you've been on this program for so long. We've talked to you so many times. It's, it gets to be... You know, with any of the return guests that we have, it gets to be difficult sometimes to just talk about something new. But you are always able to to provide new material for us to talk about. And you've done it again with this electric football wish book. And, um, you know, without getting too deep into the, into the weeds with this, just kind of and I hope I did a pretty good job of of of, of encapsulating what it is. But why don't we out of your mouth get exactly what this project is and what you set out to do with this and why you did it? Yeah, I think you hit the nail on the head, and when you said it's, it's the most fun, I, and that's what we hoped it would be, um, because you're just just paging through, and, and these images are so, for those of us of a certain age, they're just we've never forgotten these images uh, of, of these pages from the Christmas catalogs uh, that were special to us, and obviously electric football, electric football was special, but those pages, like you said, came with table hockey and uh, just all sorts of uh, amazing sports things that just made your mind your mind boggle. So that's that's what we set out to do, um, just to make something really fun, um, something that wasn't as daunting as trying to read 600 pages like the buzz was. But um, yeah, and um, so I'm glad you guys enjoyed it. So it's, it sounds like um, sounds like we did pretty good. You absolutely did. Uh, we're talking with Earl Shores, uh, author of the Electric Football Wish Book, which is a uh, just a um, it's very little text. What it is is the actual text. The text that you see is the actual text that, that was lifted from the pages of these catalogs. Earl, tell us about the catalogs themselves. Where did you get them? I see there's some Sears in there. There's Sears in there. There's J.C. Penney. Where do these catalogs come from? Um, they're on my shelf, most of them. And uh, between uh, Rody Garcia and myself, um, back in the 90s when we were putting together the Unforgettable Buzz, these catalog pages are really the backbone of the buzz because that's that's where we started i have a notebook um that was started where i had the you know i had made copies of the catalog pages and had these pages in a notebook so if you you guys have read the buzz but i mean the buzz chapters are by year um so pretty much we had a notebook of catalog pages and you know, fleshed out from there uh the rest of the history so 
these pages are, mean a lot to us because, like I said, they truly are the backbone of the buzz as we could look at, you know, 1958 or whatever and see what Ward and Sears had and, you know, like I said, try to flesh out or find out what else was going on that year. And we were very fortunate to get other information that, that filled that out. But um, there's no, these were the inspiration for pretty much a, a lot of what we wrote. Um, just to have these, have these years and to have the evolution of the game laid out in these pages. And I think, um, you know, when you said the most fun book, I think this lays out the evolution of, a fo of electric football in the simplest way possible, like without my text getting in the way. You can just page it and see that they got bigger through the years and they got very elaborate and we got Super Bowl games. And then you can also see it start to go in the other direction as the electronic games come into being in the, the mid seventies and then, you know, by the late eighties or the mid eighties, it's the same game every year because that's what, Tudor was just making a single game. So you went from years where there were almost 40 different games being made to the years in the late eighties when there was two games being made by, by one company. So you, and you can see all that. I think that encapsulates, um, you know, the evolution of electric football, but you can still have fun just looking through it. You don't even have to worry about the evolution. You can just look at, the elaborate games, how Sears and Ward and Pennies presented them, and how important they were to those retailers because they gave them full color pages. They gave them, you know, the, the games are big at the top of the page. So if you turn the page in that 1969 or 1907 catalog, you know, it was a big impact to turn the page, and there's that big Super Bowl game sitting there. Uh, you took, you take us through, uh, in this book, you take us through. Uh, in, in a chronological order, which I like as well. You 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 literally start in in the mid fifties and you work your way through. And I, I like that because as you flip the pages, you can see, like you said, the the evolution. You can also see, which I think is a lot of fun as well, uh, the prices. I think that's a blast. I think I I love looking at the prices of the prices of these things. Seven ninety nine for some of the stuff. Six ninety nine. I mean, that's a that's a that's a lot of fun too. Um, what was the thing, Earl, that uh, as you put this book together, what was uh, what struck you most about this evolution? Did because have, have you know being so close to the subject matter as you were as you are because of the other two books, the Unforgettable Buzz and Full Color Football? How by the time you get to this book, was there anything left to, to kind of to, to to grab you? And and if so, what was it? Um. Yeah. I, I, really, because a lot of these pages. We do. We did squeeze them into the buzz, either a full page or a partial page to show, like different parts in the buzz. We have like the a picture of the the Orange Bowl from 1969 in the Super Bowl, and you know the Tudor Super Bowl game to see how similar they look. But we never got these pages in color. There's there's a few excerpts in full color electric football, um, so we, we just really felt like these pages were so important to us and to how we told the story um, that, uh, yeah, I mean, we were excited by having them and to, to being able to show these pages um, in full page uh, just to get it out there. We, it, it was important to us to, to do this final, well, I will say final, I, I think this is it. I don't think there's anything more we can squeeze out. But um, no, this book was, um, was exciting to do. It wasn't really, there was... Uh, now, it was it was lots of fun to put together you know, personally, even though, like you said, so close to the the topic that uh, you know these pages, like I said, th from the mid '90s, these pages have been in our minds, in our notebooks, on my desk, kind of thing. So um, it it we just felt it was important to get these pages out there in color because that the, they they had their full impact in color more so than if you look at it in the buzz and uh, side by side. And yeah, we really wanted to lay it out felt it was important to, as much as we could, to lay Sears and Ward side by side. So when you open the book and have a spread of pages, um, you have Ward and Sears of the same year side by side. So you can see what was going on between those two retailers because uh, they were doing different things. Uh, the retailers were asking for different things. Ward and Sears would ask Tudor or Gotham or whoever for something a little different from the other retailer. So they would have, have something unique to sell rather than all have the same game. We're talking with Earl Shores, uh, author of the Electric Football Wish Book um, here on the Knee Jerks. I'm Greg Eno from uh, Out of Bounds uh, WordPress blog. And Big Al Alpeaton, of course, is uh, to my right, to your left on the screen. We'll be bringing you Alan in a second. I want to ask you real quick, though, about Earl, about the, um, um, the, the game itself, Electric Football itself. Was there a um, – over the years – 
was there a uh, a time where the game was ever available through this catalog where you were there ever versions available in only only in the catalog that you couldn't get in a retail store or was that still a little bit too advanced uh, you wouldn't do a mail order thing necessarily or, i mean or, oh, no, or not everything... at all that, that's that's what's beautiful about and I, i'm glad you asked that question greg that's that's a really good point and that's what makes us so excited about looking through it um the there were uh, retailer-specific games. Uh, in 1965 in Sears, there's, and it, 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 this is actually on the cover of the book, is the game that has the stadium that goes almost two-thirds of the way around the game. That's the Gotham Big Bowl. That was exclusive to Sears. Sears was the only place that sold it. So um, you, know, it, you, you couldn't get it at Ward, and you only had Sears. And um, there was uh, – and so Ward 65 – uh, Sears had the big ball, so in 66, Ward wanted a game from Tudor that was something like the big ball. So if you go to the 1966 Ward page, Tudor made a game that we, it, it's called the accordion game because the grandstand kind of folds out and goes around the game, almost two-thirds, just like the big ball. So these exclusive games were very important to moving the the detail, the dimensions of electric football forward, and then those Super Bowls, they were exclusive to Sears, at least from 69 to 76. Sears was the only one who, who sold a Super Bowl game. So, uh, no, the, the retail exclusive games were really uh, were very important. And, again, I'll, I'll make one more illustrative point that in 69 – uh, Sears and Tudor hooked up for that beautiful 1969 Super Bowl game with the markings on the field that looked pretty much like the Orange Bowl did. And then in 1970, Ward had a special game from Tudor that came with three teams and a bigger grandstand and um, a different markings on the field that was sp- specific to Ward. So, and that was the first game with three teams. So the evolution of the game, really, a lot of it came through these retailer-specific games. I'm holding up right now the uh, 69 Orange Bowl uh, Super Bowl uh, version with the Colts and the Jets, uh, as you as you indicated there, the 1969 Sears uh, page. Let's bring Big Al in. What you got for Earl Shores? Yeah, I said to laugh because I uh, my Christmas gift in 1970 was the Vikings Chiefs Super Bowl uh, electric football game, which is the main thing on our cover. Yeah, it's yes. right on the cover, exactly. I yes. recognize it right away. I mean that that game is still burned into my uh, my brains. I I played it so much as a kid. Uh, what I wanted to ask, maybe go into a little bit about how you put this together, because catalogs by nature were designed to, uh, were designed to be ephemeral. These weren't things people kept for years and years and years. You know, once you know, plus they often got tore up, they got marked up by the kids by circling what they wanted for Christmas, so on and so forth. How did you find? Uh, how did you get all these scans put together? I mean, I could just imagine it must have been a heck of a amount of research just finding the catalogs alone, let alone all the different retailers. And all and trying to find this, you know, this, especially the as you described about the the uh, catalog specific only uh, game. So can you go a little bit into the process? Yeah, um, as I said, I mean, I I have a very large shelf here um, in my office <laughs> with uh, you know Sears and Ward and Penny's Christmas catalogs. We, you know, back in the nineties, um, the internet was <laughs> was not the internet that we know and. You know, the, the way to track down the history or to start the history was to have the catalogs ourselves. And between Rody and I, um, we had a large combination of collections, and we copied the pages for each other. And that's how we both had notebooks full of, um, you know, full of catalog scans. So, so we had them. We we owned probably ninety five percent of the pages that are in there. Um, uh, they're part of our collections and for the, I mean, we had them and we used them for the other things, but for this book, when mm-hmm. we started to put it together, um, yet, like you said, Al, those pages, those books weren't meant to last. So those pages are really yellow. Mm-hmm. Um, so we worked really hard, um, to try to make this book, um, to take the yellow out of the pages and make the book bright. So the pages look almost new. So there was, we spent a good bit of effort, um, you know, taking out wrinkles and taking out yellow and trying to make the, you know, the images as they might have been when our catalogs were mailed to us and, you know, when they landed on our doorstep in the late, late sixties or early seventies. So I, I, we did a lot of rescanning. We really mm-hmm. did. I went back through my entire collection and, you know, spent, you know, a couple of weeks just rescanning the pages and trying to get as full of a page as I could get, because sometimes, you know, the case, you, not, let me put it this way too, no catalog pages were destroyed in making this book. <laughs> we, we treasure our catalogs. We, we didn't rip any out um, or anything like that to, to make the, 
the book. So um, I rescanned them. Uh, we worked on them in Photoshop to to brighten them up and you know, make something uh, uh, make something that uh, looks looks new. So it almost feels like you're doing new. So it we spent a lot of time um, just rescanning. I mean, there there are pages. Most of them are our pages. I wanna, and just to, uh, well, just to follow up real quick, yeah. were there any catalogs you couldn't find, or were you able to pretty much find what you needed to find? You know, was there anything missing? I guess I should say from uh, uh, that you wanted to put into the book that you couldn't find. No, I mean there, we made some cha you know, some choices because we were. I mean, uh, this one's the most affordable book mm -hmm. we've made. I mean, for a while there, Amazon had it for $14, which was great, but it's fifteen seventy five now on Amazon. So we tried to balance it out that um, let's make this one, get our page count versus what we need to charge. Um, so we made some choices of, of pages to leave out that if, mm -hmm. if there were some early pages that were repeating games because in the early 60s there weren't a great variety of games right. and also they first appeared in it throughout the 50s most of the time they were in black and white ah. so with this being a color book we didn't want to waste I, well waste is that's probably the right word we didn't want to take up pages with uh, monochrome images uh, of essentially the ga same game three mm -hmm. times like Sears the Sears page from 55 looks essentially like the Sears page from 59 with a little Gotham game in the corner kind of thing so we just you know, made some choices of, of what's going to look best. And I mean, some of the pages that, uh, you know, I, I really love, there's an Alden page from, I think, 71 that has a beautiful uh, game on it with a, a Tudor game, and it has a Joe Namath box, and it has the, uh, I don't know if either of you guys had the Pro Bowl Live Action Football, the, the big one that, where the mat, mm -hmm. you put the big mat out, it was made by Marks, and the, and the, uh, the guys were on wheels, and you pushed them around, and they actually tackled each Yes, other. I so, remember that. Yeah, I buddy I had yeah. that one, actually, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it sometimes it felt like it worked well. Sometimes it did. I right. mean, the fact that they tackled each other—that was cool. But yeah. yeah, it was it was an ambitious game. Yes, so that's in there, and um, yeah, that just uh, even. I mean, the Sears and Ward pages are beautiful, but um, you know, some of the Alden and, and the Pennies—it's like they're really they're nice looking pages. I mean, yeah. the, the electric football was very popular, and the retailers really wanted to present them well. Earl, I'm trying to. I'm doing my best to. Uh, Follow along with you, so I'm trying to show the viewers uh, everything okay. you're talking about. <laughs> it was a 1970 <laughs> Alden catalog. Yeah, 1970 yeah, yeah. Alden page was what it was. Yeah, yeah. Well, I yeah. found it. I found it. I showed it to the to the viewers. Uh, look, you know, we we talk a lot about we give you a lot of credit as we should, but I want to I want to give you an opportunity, Frank. Well, first of all, we're talking to Earl Shores, author of the Electric Football Wish Book here on the New Jerks. I'm Greg Eno from Out of Bounds WordPress blog, and Big Al Alpin is here with us as well. I want you though to, to give you the, give you the opportunity to talk about your cohorts, uh, Rodi Garcia and Michael Cronenberg. Uh, who worked on this book? Uh, you know, I know you mentioned Rody a lot in in the interviews we 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 do with you. We've never spoken to him, of course, but uh, I want to give you the opportunity to talk a little bit about these guys and how much of a help they've been to you throughout uh, these projects. Yeah, Rody is. Um, I, I talk about Rody first. He's sort of uh, our wives think that we were the the brothers that were lost kind of thing. Um, we hooked up in the mid. 90s, he wrote me a letter after I had written an article about electric football for a magazine called Collecting Toys. And I got a lot of letters, um, and they're all very nice ones, but um, somehow Rody and I clicked together. And uh, I, really from the, it's, from the start, it's like it's, uh, it's been a, a great relationship. Um, he's, I, I term him as the finder of the unfindable. I like to think of him, or I've even termed him as, um, uh, I'm thinking of the... the the uh, the movie The Great Escape, where uh, James Garner's character, he's the finder. He finds everything. He he gets the pieces that they need to build the tunnel and stuff like that. So uh, I like to think of Rhodey as he's the finder. He he finds the unfindable, including not only the material he would find. He found people that we could talk to. He was the one who made connections with Norman Sass and Lee Payne. So and, and even um, some of the Canadian people, he was the he was the person who could find stuff, and he's like he was like that as a collector too. He he had he was a, a very serious GI Joe collector and had a lot of uh, one of a kind stuff. Um, so yeah, he's just a, he's a great friend. Um, he's great support. He uh, yeah, we just uh, I bounce so much stuff off of him um, that it's it's um, it's hard to to get into a good friendship late in your life, you know, or, but, um, uh, he's done it. He's been a good friend and just, uh, yeah, I, I couldn't have done any of this without him. And, uh, Michael Cronenberg is, uh, a designer extraordinaire. He also works with, um, 
the film the wire group uh, that Eddie uh, Moeller's part of that uh, Turner Classic does on Sunday mornings. They do the wire things, and so he does. He's got a boxing magazine going and whatever. But he came to us. He found us in uh, 2012, and um, in the summer of 2012, after Norman Sass passed away, and he pretty much told us that uh, I need to design your book. <laughs> That's how he approached this, <laughs> and uh, he was right. He was absolutely right. And um, we've worked really hard on a lot of things, and we've he and I have winnowed out different details on the design things and gone back and forth. And it, I have it's been a an amazing learning process for me to work with him and watch his work and to to start to appreciate. I mean, I look at the world differently from my working with him. He, I, the way I look at covers, the way I look at books, the way I look at the way I look at fonts on a TV screen now. <laughs> um, I, my eyes have changed by working with Michael and um, all the whatever. I mean, he has he has an art degree and he's an artist, and I, I, I'm grateful for how he's enriched my life that way. So it's. It's been, really been, uh, you know, a, a great run with him too ever since uh, since 2012, and I, we couldn't have done any of this without him either. Uh, Earl Shores uh, of the Electric Football Wish Book, and I was teasing you earlier about uh, that you're going to wring everything you can out of this Electric Football thing. But now that you've put these three books together, the Unforgettable Buzz, Full Color Football, and this one, I mean, is it fair to just? I, it, I'm just going to ask you, what, what's next? I mean, what are you going to do with? I mean, I know you've got the Unforgettable Buzz website. I know you're still very active in in that, and I know that you. You still promote what you've done already, but I mean, what now that you've kind of done? I think everything you can you can do from a publishing standpoint. Uh, what's next with you and uh, your inve- endeavors with this marvelous hobby? Yeah, I don't know, um, and I, I think you're right on the mark. I, I I really can't. There's no other projects, you know, publishing projects that um, are planned or even that I can see. Um, doing uh it, i i think we've like i said we, we've these pages are dear to you know near and dear to us and we felt like we wanted to get them out in their full you know as a full page and in color and for people to see and the people enjoy and you know experience that thrill of running through the you know catalog page again like like we used to have and yeah, I, I honestly don't know um I, I i don't know uh it's been we've been running the blog for six years we've been running uh, the Facebook page for almost six years, and all this stuff, the Twitter pages, and it's like there's 3,000 Facebook posts and 300 and some blog posts, and we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. Al, anything else before we let her go? Yeah, I just wanted to ask. Uh, you know, there's a, I, as you, we've been saying, there's been a, there's a, more than just electric football in this. You know, like some of those rod hockey games are absolutely gorgeous. I would have killed for them. I'd kill them them now. Is there anything in these uh, in this book that really maybe it was some of your favorite stuff? Yeah, I mean that I obviously love the electric football games, and I love table hockey too. I had a number mm-hmm. of table hockey games, and even um, I in the early 2000s or the late 1990s, I was starting to collect them too. So I have, mm-hmm. there, there's some of those in there, um, but just all of, you know, anything in there. I had the race games, yeah. um, uh, the, uh, the Eagle table hockey games. There's just like, as they said, Al, they're beautiful. And I think there's a pennies page from 69 where mm-hmm. not only is there the, Cle- it, you know, Eagle and Coleco were pretty much in it. The Eagle was a Canadian toy company and Coleco was an American and Cle- Coleco came in and bought eagle but there's a beautiful game there and but also there's the uh the layout of the the two little plastic things you could buy with all the teams of the yeah. nhl and it's just you know it's it's just beautiful it's just absolutely beautiful and <laughs> you know inspirational and there's also those games in here that i never got that yeah you know you i, I it's hard looking back on my childhood it's hard to complain for what mm-hmm. santa delivered but you know different times you would you would look and see wow that would, it would have been cool to have that and but some of them uh the other games might not have been you know that they, they, if they were around for a single year, they might have disappeared for a reason. There might they right. might not have been that that playable. Um, now the electric football, I had electric baseball. That was kind of tough to play. Um, it didn't feel as realistic as the others. The uh, mm-hmm. the Pro Bowl live action football, but the rod hockey games were were especially the the ones from the '60s that had the metal. Right. The whole game is metal. In the '70s, Coleco started to make the the ends were plastic and stuff like that. So, but where there's like a crowd scene going around the rink and just. Uh, yeah, they're they're beautiful. The only trouble with the you know collecting table hockey games at this age is mm-hmm. that the uh, the boards start to sag. 
so the, the, the slots get uneven, and the men mm-hmm. get, you know, if you slide the men back and forth, they're tilted, so they'll, they'll miss the puck sometimes. So anyway. I think you, you just described the Red Wings. Hey. <laughs> well, um, well, the Flyers are pretty much missing the puck for a long time down here too. So. Um, well, the um, the uh, let people know where where the folks who are watching this or listening to this podcast who are kind of getting in on this late, if you will. You know, we we the three of us have been talking for a number of years about this, but for somebody who's just kind of hearing this for the first time or kind of wanting to know more about, you mentioned the blog, you mentioned the Facebook page. Just kind of, I'll give you a chance now to just kind of let everybody know the different social media channels, the different ways they can find you on, not you personally, but they can find the subject matter on the Internet. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, first, there's our page, the unforgettablebuzz.com, and we are focusing on uh, the history of electric football and, and the vintage parts of electric football, and there's lots of photos of old games and vintage games and catalog pages and stuff like that, the unforgettablebuzz.com. At TudorGames.com, you can buy the game, and they have gone back to making all their games now have come with metal fields, which uh, is a pretty cool thing, and they work pretty well, and they have all the teams in dark and uh, white jerseys, and I don't, I don't think they have the old orange jerseys yet, but uh, they look really good. The, the, the teams look really good, and um, they keep Tudor Games is keeping the keeping things alive. There's the Miniature Football Coaches Association, which is uh, a a group where they are focused on playing the game as now and playing it competitively. And it's amazing to watch them play. There are videos up online at different places for the miniature football and miniature football coaches association. And they have varied leagues. There's one here in Philly, very competitive league. I've watched them play. I've not competed, not, I wouldn't dare compete. I've watched them play. There are leagues uh, throughout. There's a big league in Kansas city. There's leagues in Texas. Um, so it's ongoing. Um, so that's the, it's us, the unforgettablebuzz.com. There's tutorgames.com. And there's a mini, miniature football coaches association, which I think is the MFCA. I'm not sure if we're dot com or a dot net or dot org. I think. Well, I got. I have uh, full disclosure. I I, I asked for. I, I'm not afraid to say this. I'm not ashamed to say this. I asked for an electric football game for Christmas this year. I'm 54 mm-hmm. years old, and here I am asking for an electric football game for Christmas. 46 years after my first one. We'll see if <laughs> if Santa comes through. I hope. She does. <laughs> and, uh, I, don't know I don't know what the hell I'm going to do with it, but I, I, I can't wait to open it up on Christmas morning like a freaking eight-year-old again. And it just goes to show you where this, you know, these people like us can get all caught up in this stuff. Earl, thank you so much for, for being with us on a Sunday evening. Thanks for rescheduling and uh, being flexible, and good luck with, with everything. And, uh, and uh, we, really, we really treasure your friendship, and we'll, we'll, I'm sure we'll have you on. Uh, for the um, anniversary show, which will be, gosh, the, the anniversary ninth, show, uh, yes, yes, the ninth <laughs> I anniversary. I promise I'll do that, yeah. Uh, in May. So thanks a lot, Earl. Appreciate it, my friend. Uh, Alan, Greg, it's always a pleasure, and thank you so much for being a, uh, a stalwart supporter of, 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 our, of our work and our projects and, and electric football. So I, I can't thank you guys enough. The pleasure is all ours, and thank you for all you've done. Thanks so much. Appreciate it. Earl Shores uh, with us here, and uh, gosh, uh, Al, what did you think when you read, when you went flip for this book? What was your thoughts? Brought back a lot of memories. You know, like I said, a lot of these uh, either I had some of these games, or I, you saw them on uh, television. You know, when we had our five channels we could watch, or something like that. Where, uh, where a lot of these games was all advertised, or at least games I wanted and never got, like Earl was mentioning, and uh, and obviously. Uh, as soon as I, I got my copy and saw the cover with my game I had on it, boy, it was just awesome. Because <laughs> I, I played the hell out of that electric football game. I got the Super Bowl game from 1970. So, But it's it, it really is a really, really cool book. With, again, more than just electric football in it. If you were, uh, if you were a, a boy from, you know, in that, 60s, in that 60s and 70s era where this stuff was at its peak, uh, it's it, all the memories just come rushing back of uh, of your childhood, to say the very least. Absolutely. Okay, we're going to go with question number two of the birthday game. As I indicated, this person made his uh, name and has is making his name uh, in the world of hockey. He's been associated with four teams, not as a player. He is a Stanley Cup champion, not as a player, and is currently associated currently as we speak with the same team he's been associated with before and. The team with which he won that Stanley Cup. Oh, good lord! Shoot. No, I'm really at a loss with this one. I really am. It's not ringing any bells. It probably will. I'll, I'll probably kick myself in the you know what once you tell me. But I I don't even have a guess at this point. I really don't. 
Okay. Well, yeah. he's currently coaching. He's coaching right now. Yeah. Might be coaching at this very moment. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if they're playing tonight, I'm not sure. Yeah. That. I, that's, shoot. You know, I, I'm just drawing a blank. You know, okay. maybe, maybe, maybe I've been off, off. We've been off too long. My mind's not as sharp. <laughs> okay. Or I'm just well, we'll, getting old and I'm forgetting that. <laughs> we'll come back with we'll come oh, back yeah. with, with the gimme in a, in a little while. But let's uh, right. let's dive into everything we've missed over the past month. All right. Well, obviously, there's a lot of Lions talk. Uh, they are currently standing eight and six uh, with their playoff hopes, if not on life support, they are definitely in the ICU. We'll put it that way. Uh, there's a lot of rumors about uh, Jim Caldwell's job status, so we'll go a little bit into all that because they did the Lions did played on Saturday. Uh, this weekend, in which they handily beat the Bears 20 to 10. So, we'll talk about where things stand right now. Uh, obviously, the Tigers made a lot of news over the past few weeks. Uh, between, uh, I think the best news we're going to have to talk about in this whole podcast is Alan Trammell and uh, Jack Morris being elected to the Hall of Fame. Uh, we'll also talk about the uh, moves El Avila has been making between Trady and Kinsler. He's picked off some uh, veteran free agents on bargain deals, and we'll talk about the Rule Five draft. Um, also, we'll try and touch on what's going on with the Pistons and Red Wings, as we haven't even had a chance to talk to them, as the Pistons have fallen back to earth somewhat, and the Wings are starting to look like they may be in a death spiral. We'll talk about what's going on with the those teams, and specifically maybe Jim, Jeff Blaschel's uh, status as coach as well. So, But as always, Greg, considering the time of year, it's first and foremost, it's 